You blinked. Uh, I went. Alright guys, this is Rum Runner. Welcome back to my LP, episode 6. Um, today I had a, uh, you know, fun plan in mind, and uh, I got started on it, recorded a little bit of time on it, but thought that, but I had made a mistake on it, and I thought it would be worth mentioning to you guys before you even think about making one yourself. Uh, today I'd like to make a witch farm, and uh, I started working a little bit here. There was a witch hut. These were the uh, posts, I believe, right here. Um, so I started, you know, I already took it down, figured out where it was, all that fun stuff. And uh, then I spent a little bit of time online reading, and as it turns out, witch huts do not actually spawn witches unless they're in the swamp biome. So if you look where we are right now, it says river, river biome, um, right on the second to last line uh, next to B for biome, it says river. Um, any witch hut, although the witch hut can spawn here, will not actually be able to spawn witches. Uh, you have to make sure that your witch hut is 100% in a swampland biome, as this is right here. So, anyway, um, this area right here is unusable. Um, I have already... Oops. A little bit of lag there. I have already found a suitable replacement. And um, I built a quick horse nether tunnel over to it. Um, here's where our main nether area, where our base is, on the other side of those portals. But if you just come, I believe it's to the north here, and then we uh, head over to the east a little bit. The reason why there's so many curves or turns in this tunnel is because I wanted to spend as little time as possible out in the open. So and This is just staying in the rock. Alright, here we are. Uh, tie him up. And, yeah. We'll get started in a second. Alright, so as you can see in the F3 information right there, it says on the second to last line after B, it says Swampland. That's your biome. And completely intersecting this, this is all entirely in Swampland. Um... Yep, and I've also marked out the edge of the biome with these right here. So, if you look on the X line, all the way to the right where it says C, that's the uh, chunk that you're in, so chunk 77, chunk 78. So the chunk starts right here with the first part of the wither hut here, and also, same thing here, if you look on the Z line all the way on the right, chunk negative 91, chunk negative 90. So, it's fully within one chunk. Speaking of chunk, truffle shuffle. Uh, next step is to mark where our spawning pads are going to be. I've already done that with a couple half slabs here. And basically these are just going to circle the entire thing. Now where is the actual witch spawning area? It's everywhere under the roof, uh, the lip of the roof right here. So if we just follow this all the way around like that and then it turns like that. Oh. Oops. Like that. Alright, and you would think it would go right off to the right here, but it actually includes where this juts out as well. So we'd have to come one more out, and then you just square it off. We'll just finish our circle like that, and there we go. That is where the actual witches can spawn, given a flat area to spawn on. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the rest of this witch hut, and uh, then finish off the spawning pads. And I'll show you when I'm all done. Alright, and there we have it, our two spawning platforms. Uh, those are all the area where a witch can spawn and nothing else. Um, and that's what we're going to use to spawn in our witches. Um, the next part here, uh, we need to clear out a little bit of space for our wiring. So I'm going to take four off of this side. Oh, too far. Oh. Right. Right. And then 
I'm just going to throw some cobblestone in here just to keep our wiring nice and safe on the hard ground here. And then on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing, except over here we're going to go out six blocks. Four, five, six. All right, guys, quick little note here. The cobblestone on the side that I said was supposed to be six wide, actually seven wide. So just add one more over here. Uh, the reason why is because when we add our pistons, uh, we don't want them to be right here. We want it to be over here so that the whole platform can move over one and then be pushed back. All right, next step, um, you want to add your pistons. And on this side, on the side where the cobblestone is four wide, you want to add them so that they're right up against the platform here, uh, facing the platform. And then after that, you want to add in your comparators facing into the, the pistons. And then from there, um, you want to add your hoppers. Basically, we're just going to put a bunch of hoppers on this side and then a couple or, you know, hoppers pointing into these. And those are going to be our, our timing mechanism, basically. Um, essentially, what this machine does is whenever there is a witch on the pad, um, these hoppers are going to release an item, one into the other and then back, and that's going to make these pistons extend, and then over here, uh, offset by a few seconds, um, the same thing will happen, and we'll push the whole platform back. And when that happens, mobs fall through half slabs. When they go back and forth like that, the mob will fall through, and that's how we'll get the witch off of the platform very quickly. Um, now this all happens when the witch uh, triggers a um, was a tripwire that we will string across this entire thing. Um, yeah, so I need a, few, a bunch more hoppers here actually. Um, my grab might have to grab some wood, and I'll be back in a minute. <sighs> These hoppers are so expensive. This is wiping out my iron supply, and I am down to no oak wood anymore. But here it goes. Ooh, that hurt. Alright, now on the other side you want to do something very similar. Uh, except that the pistons need to be one away from your platform. Here. So, let me just put these in here. And then the hoppers should be all the way on the back. Oops the back of your seven wide platform anyway, or whatever. Uh, and then you put them on the other side. There it is. And now this time, just so that the timing is correct, you want to put three comparators into each one of these pistons here. Uh, and that's that step complete. Alright, it's worth noting um, that the reason why we used comparators here and not um, repeaters is because comparators don't release light when power goes through them, and repeaters do. And when the repeaters light up, it would cut down on our spawning area right here and reduce the efficiency of our witch farm. Anyway, next step, uh, on each one of these hoppers, on the inside hopper pointing out, you put a sticky piston just like this and then outside of that you put a redstone block like that and that basically just powers that hopper to stop the timer from working uh, we just want a, a short pulse on each one of these to extend the other non-sticky pistons and that's so that the platform can move so you go like that and then on top of each one of these you just put a cobblestone block like that. Both sides. Oops. Get rid of that. Alright, next step uh, is the tripwire hooks. And you put one in every single one of these cobblestone blocks, both on that side and this side. And then from there, you want to grab your rope and completely fill in all the space between all of the tripwire hooks. Uh, so I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Alright, 
and just to check to make sure that you got every single string in here that you should, uh, on your last row right here, just every time you put down a string, make sure that the tripwire hook actually connects. And that's everything. As you can see, it's already starting to work. Cool. Um, now to actually get this thing running so that it moves the platform, in each one of these hoppers we just need to put one item. It doesn't matter what it is, just one item will do. And then same thing on the other side. One item in every one of these. Like so. And now when we jump on here, the whole platform should move over this way and then come back. Alright, we have our volunteer. Not a cave sheep, but just a black one. I'm going to come across here. And there it is. Alright, guys, uh, I have a quick correction from before. Um, basically, I put the second platform, one platform too low, or one block too low. So I'm going to break all this. Let's see if I can grab one here. There we go. And then it's just going to go up one more. All right, that's the first layer done here. Um, now we just have to repeat the process up above. And for that, you can just grab your cobblestone or whatever block you want to use for this part right here, and just make the same platform we made before, just on top of the whole thing. Uh, I, I know not every single one of these blocks is necessary, but um, you know, why not? Why not make it easy on yourself with the platform? And don't forget, each one of these hoppers also needs to have a block in it as well. Alright, so one thing that I like to do, uh, because this is going to be completely um, all dark every under here and we want the witches to go through this system as quick as possible, um, I like to come in here as well and just sort of block this off with a couple half slabs. Just to prevent all kinds of spawning that might happen and also to block the witches from moving off of the platform. They um, won't be able to get through this because this is now only a block and a half tall like that. And then over here on this side you gotta put a few more. Two, three, four. And we'll do something very similar on the top as well, but I'm gonna need some more half slabs, so I'll be back. Alright, so I've added a whole bunch more stuff here. Uh, now it has a roof going across that. I put the roof just on top of the cobblestone block that's above the piston on the second level there. Um, and then I added these half slabs over here so that when the redstone extends, when there is a witch on the platform, um, no mob will be able to spawn on top of that block. Uh, and then over here, so that the witches don't try to escape, I put just a barrier of um, sandstone slabs there. Same up here, and this is oops, less than a two block tall height, and I cannot get through there, and nor will any mobs be able to get through there. Yeah, Alright, so I've uh, done quite a bit now. I've built the pit underneath our spawning pads to catch all the witches that spawn there. Um, they then funnel the witches down into this tower, which brings them all the way up 30 blocks over a couple and then drops them down on a hard surface. Uh, it doesn't have to be, oh, you just saw one drop right there. It doesn't have to be exactly 30 blocks tall, or at least 30 blocks tall, I think it's something like 28 maybe, but just to be sure, because we definitely want them to die, 
Um, you know, I figured why not just go a couple extra blocks just to make sure. Alright, now I have to uh, get rid of a couple torches in here and close this up, but just to show you the inside, we got some water that pulls everything over to this trench right here. And then that goes down here. And then because they're jumping in the water, uh, they'll get into this stream, and this brings them all the way up. Alright guys, so I wanted to check in with you really quick. I'm uh, almost up to the top of my item elevator here, which will connect to my AFK uh, spawner base area up in the sky. I think I'll make that the official name of it. <laughs> um, anyway, this thing is actually already working. Um, there you go, you can hear it clicking, that means there's some stuff on the way. Uh, there's a spawner underneath that roof right there, and if we look in here, we should be getting some items real soon. Stick, sugar, empty bottle, boring. Um, but as you can see, I've already gotten some gunpowder, some glowstone, some redstone, and this thing will speed up quite a lot once I actually get up to the AFK area. Um, I am on my way up to level 176. Uh, I'm at 146 right now, and I will check in when I get to that point. Alright, so a quick note on uh, the wiring for our tower. This is where it goes all the way up to where our AFK base is going to be. Um, basically, the witches fall right past this tower of hop or droppers right here, and a couple hoppers move them into this bottom one right here. When this one has an item in it, it powers the comparator to the repeater into this circuit right here. And uh, that goes directly into this torch and turns it off. When that torch turns off, this clock starts to run. Uh, and will run until this torch turns back on. Um, now, because we don't want to just run it for as long as there's items in here, we want it to run it for uh, a few seconds after that. Basically, this comparator, after going into this block, will continue around this loop right here. Uh, and a little property about comparators, different from repeaters, is that if you powered this loop right now, it would endlessly send power around itself. It would never go out. But the, re the uh, comparators, uh, instead, will eventually run out of power. Um, now if I put, let's see, let's put this 7 gunpowder in here. Uh, it will get thrown up into the system, all the way up. Meanwhile, this loop right here is going to stay powered which unpowers this torch and allows the clock to continue running all the way up. Eventually though, the power wear will wear out like that and it will turn off and will not turn on again until more items are put into the bottom dropper right here. Alright, so here we are. Uh, I'm at my AFK spot all the way up in the sky here. This will ensure the m minimum amount of space down there that mobs can actually spawn. Uh, there's our witch farm, our, the elevator for the witches, elevator for the items to bring it up here, um, and then once the items get up here, I have a chest here as a buffer, and then from there it'll go into those hoppers back there and get sorted into our different items that we can have from the witches. The first seven all are from, are all the witch drops, and then I just put in an extra sorting spot here uh, just in case any other items get caught up in the system, I don't want it to jam somewhere in the back of the sorter. Um, I'll show you this from the side in the back as well. Lots of hoppers, lots of chests. I will be making a iron farm very, very soon. Um, I've moved the portal up here. This goes right back to um, the spot in the nether that we went to to get to the portal down there. Uh, I also removed that portal down there. Um, as you can see, I have lit up a whole bunch of area here. And um, all this should be mob proof in here as well. You just saw which in there die, and now it's throwing the items up. Alright, so uh, just to run through these chests really quick. As you can see, I've really started to accumulate these uh, drops from the witches. I uh, let it run overnight, real-time, not Minecraft night, but real-time night. 
uh, just sitting up here collecting items, and it seems to be doing a very, very good job. I'm quite satisfied with it. Um, I think I'm going to end this episode here. It's getting a little bit long. Uh, I will work off camera on, um, you know, building out this area a little bit with, you know, everything that we possibly could need here. Um, one thing I do want to make here is a mushroom farm and get up a, a little brewing area. Just some stuff that I could work on um, while not, well, you know, while just sitting here waiting for those witch witches to deliver me some drops. Let me know in the comments if um, you want a tutorial on this sorting system. It's very good. Um, you know, it definitely does the trick. And I've also added these levers here with some hoppers under here. That's just in case one item in particular, say sticks, I am getting so much that it risks um, jamming up the system. And I don't need, you know, over four or five chests full of sticks. I, um, here, I'll do it on, you know, these items here. I can just flick this lever and it will drop the items. Well, it's a powered chest, which is why it wasn't dropping right away. But it will drop the items into this bottom hopper here. And uh, what we'll do is just connect that hopper down there to an item incinerator. And I'll just be an easy way to start dumping some of the items in case, you know, uh, they risk starting to block up the system. Last thing I want to note in this episode before we sign off here. Um, you see I've uh, lit up a circle around um, our spawner here. That's basically that lit up area are the blocks that are close enough to me that a mob can spawn. Um, things that I'm concerned about um, the most are the slimes because they won't despawn. Um, but with the slimes that spawn on the surface of swamps when the moon is full, almost full right now, um, they need darkness in order to spawn, otherwise they won't be able to spawn. So the torches will prevent their spawning um, and they'll do a, you know, a pretty good job the way it is right here. Uh, Alright, um, thank you all for hanging out. I hope you learned a little bit of something. Um, I will say I based the design for the... Um, actually, it isn't really my design. It's a design that I saw on Tango Tech's channel. I will link in the description to his, um, his video. It's a little bit more step-by-step -step process. And um, let's see, I just made a few adjustments to it to suit my own playstyle. Um, yeah, so the description will be in the, uh, or excuse me, the link will be in the description. All right, that about wraps it up for this episode. Um, like, subscribe, comment. Um, I'd love to see uh, what you guys think of all this. See if you guys have any ideas. Feel free to shoot them my way. Um, but otherwise, uh, at some point in the future, I will bring you back here and show you the you know base that I've sort of made around this. Um, anyway, have a good one, guys.